Hello and welcome. You must have heard of well-known Australian brands like Jacob Creek and Yellowtail, the wine brands, and there are many food brands as well. One reason they're all coming together is a concerted effort by the government to build clusters and help industry in taking their products and services overseas. Joining us now to talk more about that is Tom Kenyon, Man Minister for Manufacturing, Innovation, Trade and Small Business from South Australia. So tell us, I mean, you know, uh, the, the, the Australian wine story is, uh, is renowned as something that, you know, came in uh, almost from the cold. Uh, is that because uh, of efforts put in by uh, organizations or governments like yours or is it because people just manage to get together and find the right uh, place and the conditions? Look, it's a combination of the two. The, why our wine industry was started by our immigrants. So we had a lot of German immigrants when we first started the colony in uh, 1836 uh, and they brought their vines with them. And so ever since then, vines have grown throughout the state. Uh, and over recent times, we've um, developed, along with the University of South Australia, they've developed uh, more and more technology and got better and better at producing wine. It's got you know, more industrial and commercial, as you'd expect, as things grow. But um, now we're trying to take that to the next level using the clusters, uh, there's more and more people in the world making wine and some very good wine and so to compete with that and to make sure we continue to make the world's best wine we need to uh, have that people working together so uh, the clusters the universities right. uh, and uh, customers. So, so what was the tipping point you know between uh, the product being manufactured which as you say it was for a while and yeah. it achieving some kind of global recognition? Uh, we think um, it was uh, during the 70s it really started to take off the wine industry and then uh, the late 90s it got into um, into England so mm -hmm. uh, some really famous Creek uh, Jacobs Creek brands into England uh, and started to get well known then it got into the US so it sort of became recognized uh, very quickly as a good high value wine good quality wine excellent value and I think uh, that's started it and then the high-end wines along you know the Grange and throughout nines and others have right. so, have so Jacobs in. Creek in some way was the uh, was the sort of leader yeah, in Jacobs the Creek and uh, a yellowtail in the US yeah. should take yeah. a lot of the credit for opening right. up the market right. and then uh, since then it's sort of come through so yeah. what's what does that uh, in some ways tell us about the way clusters uh, evolve and grow I mean does it take leaders like let's say yellowtail and Jacobs Creek to set the pace and go out there uh, or is it because the government does something at the right time that I, th I think I think any of them can work. It, uh, you just have to depend on the on the situation. I think ideally you would have a strong industry led, and wine has been led very strongly by the industry. Um, the government has assisted where it can, but um, I, I think if if in the end it's the government that kicks it off, uh, that's excellent. But you, you can't do it without industry buy-in. So until right. the industry is really committed, it's not going to be successful. Right. So what are the other kind of clusters that you're working on right now and hope to uh, grow and? Push. So there's a there's a few there's a, an advanced manufacturing one in the, in the southern suburbs of the Adelaide. It's our capital city. Uh, that's um, that's be, we have a, a manufacturing sector that's been around a long time. But as China has got uh, larger and more influential, that's and and our dollar has come up a lot as well. The currency has got a lot stronger. It's made manufacturing very much harder. So now we're moving up the value chain, trying to move into that advanced manufacturing space. And we're really uh, using our Tonsley Park development down in the southern suburbs to do that. So it's going to be, we've got a university, Flinders University there, um, a TAFE College, which is a, vo a vocational training college. Uh, and they are located on the campus. They'll be residential as well. And then industry. So Siemens have uh, signed a contract to locate there. Right. And we'll work uh, with us. a lot of, well, Siemens is a very big company, obviously, but then a lot of smaller companies as well uh, to build that up. The other one, yeah. the, the main, a very big focus for us is a health cluster right in the city, in the central business district. We're building a brand new hospital and then next to that is a medical research centre. And between the two of them, there'll be, a, a, and across the road is a university. So uh, that almost a natural cluster that uh, will, should really develop into a, a very strong centre of excellence. Right, so you know, Australia has had uh, very strong and consistent economic growth for decades almost. Yeah. Uh, are these uh, uh, industries, clusters, small and medium enterprises primarily responsible for this, uh, the steady growth that you see, rather than let's say large corporations which could be driving growth in some countries? Uh, look, it's uh, over the course of that last 20 or so years, it's been a combination. So uh, at various times, various things have, have played a role in driving it. Um, perhaps one of the most influential things in our recent growth has been uh, in the, in the 80s, the, the government made a lot of very significant financial and uh, regulatory reforms. And when they made those reforms, it freed up the economy and then uh, the economy was able to take off. We had very strong productivity growth uh, and a lot more research and development started to grow. Um, recently, we've had very big contribution from large mining companies. So 
um, Rio and uh, Rio Tinto and BHP, you would know them. Um, they have really driven a lot of growth, and then there's smaller companies expanding rapidly in the mining area. Um, but at other times, it has been smaller companies, wineries, uh, things like that, that have really pushed the economy along. With the benefit of the deregulation and the and the economic reforms in the 80s was to give the economy that flexibility to move in and out of of, of various strengths. Right. Yeah. Could you give us a sense on what the year ahead is looking like for you and in your portfolio of uh, activities? So well, we've got. Um, two major, three major strategies. I've got my advanced manufacturing strategy to implement, uh, which we're doing in the Tonsley Park advanced manufacturing cluster is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, then we've got an engagement strategy with India, which is part of the reason we're here. Um, we've tried to focus our efforts in India because uh, the population of South Australia is 1.6 million, and obviously uh, India is very, very much larger than that. So we need to be very focused on how we approach India. Uh, it's an important trading and I think uh, trading partner and over time will become more and more important. Uh, India has a um, really young population that is going to, I think, take off in the next 10 years. It's really very, very influential. Uh, and we also have a, a China strategy that is important to us as well, particularly in the first stage for uh, food and wine exports because they have a, a very rapidly expanding market for food and wine exports. So, th right. th so they're my three key right. goals. And, and are you looking at bringing Indian firms, uh, more Indian firms into Australia? There are of course some Indian firms already there in mining. I yes. Know, would it be another? Yeah, we would like to see more uh, foreign investment. India is an important source of uh, foreign direct investment for us. Uh, so Australia has such a large country uh, and a comparatively small population. It uh, means generating capital is hard. So we're quite big, uh, quite reliant on foreign capital. So India is a good source of capital. Uh, we'll be looking for that investment and be very welcome. Um, we think there's a lot of uh, mutual benefit there and we'll be looking forward to that. Right, uh, Minister, thank you very much for speaking with <laughs> us. Thanks for having me thank today. You.